Jones, Garstown District Court, Justice Clifford Kingham presiding. The court is about to take up the matter of State versus George Hodgdon, H O D G D O N. The matter comes before the court for trial on what appears to be three separate Class A misdemeanors. Would counsel identify themselves for the record, please, Diamond Townsend? Catherine Bonner, Ware Prosecutor. Defense counsel, please. Seth Ripple, for the Your Honor, are they Class A or Class B misdemeanors for clarification? I'm sorry? Are they Class B or Class A misdemeanors? They appear to be Class B misdemeanors. All three have checked off as Class B misdemeanors. That was my understanding. State, may I proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, Your Honor, say what has been any witnesses be sequestered. I intend on calling John Green first, so my other witnesses, all witnesses are hereby sequestered in both the defense counsel and the state who advise to inform the witnesses they are not to discuss the testimony during the pendency of these proceedings. Are your witnesses outside, Attorney Hickel? Not yet. Would you please go out just for a moment and make sure they understand they're not to discuss their testimony during these proceedings? Yes, Your Honor. State's informed your witnesses also? Yes, Your Honor. Go out to the back. Thank you, Your Honor. State calls John Green to the stand. Can you remain standing and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Can you be seated, please? Can you please state your name and spell your last name? John Abbott Green. Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. Good morning, Mr. Green. Mr. Green, what do you do for a living? I'm a contractor. Okay. And do you do anything outside of contracting? Do you volunteer? A selectman. A selectman? And for what time? Okay. How long have you been a selectman? Two years. Now, I'm going to take you back a ways to April 30th of last year, so almost a year ago. Did you happen to be at Palmer's Tavern that day, that evening? Yes. Okay. How many times did you get there? If you remember. It's after work. It's been a long day. Okay. And what did you do when you got there? I hung out with a few of my employees. I paid them off for a job. They wanted to take me out for pizza. There's a pizza place next door, so we were eating. Okay. Eating pizza? Yep. Okay. Did you have anything to drink? I did. Alcohol-wise, I mean. Later. Later on? Yeah, I had two beers. Okay. And later that evening, did anything unusual happen? The Red Sox lost. And that was unusual. Well, not so unusual last year. Other than watching the Red Sox and eating pizza, did anything unusual happen? Yes. What was that? I went outside on the deck to finish a drink, and I was assaulted. Okay. And so you were assaulted, you mean physically? Yes. Okay. And did you later find out who was assaulting you? Yes. But at the time that it started, did you know who it was, who these people were? No. Okay. Just generally, how did this happen, just in general? I was seated on the exterior deck. Somebody came up to me that I didn't know. I don't know. The confrontation ensued. Okay. Now, you said somebody came up. That was one person. Did anybody else come up to you? Yes. Okay. And did that person, what happened with that person? What did they do? Head-butted me in the face. Okay. Now, this was happening, you said, outside on the deck? Yes. Okay. As this was going on, what did you do? I didn't really realize what was going to happen. I stood up and tried to talk to them. They were kind of cussing at me, and I said, there's no problem, I'll leave. And one of them said, no, you have a problem, and the other one instantly head-butted me, and I did have a problem. 
As the assault was ongoing, other than defending yourself, did you ask anyone for help? Yes. Who was that? I, I asked. There was probably half the bar had come outside on the detect to, to watch what was going on. And uh, I did ask, I asked for someone to call the police. Okay. And um, does the, are you familiar with George Hodgson? Not really. Okay. That night you weren't familiar with him? No. Okay. Did you know who he was, the owner of the box? I did not. You didn't? Okay. But as you were during the course of this altercation, um, did you make eye contact with him? I believe so. Okay. You believe so? Yeah. Okay. And where was he? On the deck with everybody else. So he was outside on the deck? Yes. Okay. He wasn't inside the bar? No, not at that point. And is that person that you made eye contact with, the owner of the bar, is he present here this morning? Yep. Can you point him out for the judge, for the record? Uh, just describe something he's wearing, if you could. Black jacket. Okay. Before you take notice, the witness identified the defendant. Any objection? Okay. And when you made eye contact with him, what happened? Well, not a, not a whole lot. There, there were a lot of people standing on the deck watching the incident. And uh, not much. People were hollering and cheering, and uh, it was it was quite a scene. Did can I can I interrupt you? Can you, you said people were hollering, and what was the other word you said? Uh, cheering. Or yeah, cheering? yeah, cheering. cheering. Yeah. Thank you. Got it. Now, did the defendant? Um, did you ask him to call the police? I, I asked everyone there. I I screamed it. Okay. So you're screaming, call the police? Yes. Okay. Was, and the defendant was outside as you were doing this? Yes. Okay. How far away was he from you during the course of this altercation? How close did he get? It's difficult to, it's difficult to say because it started at one side of the deck and ended about 200 feet on the other side after I'd been dragged through the parking lot. Okay. So... But at any rate, he was out on the deck while this was going on. Somewhere on, yeah. Okay. How badly were you injured? Uh, well, half, half of uh, the inside of this lip was hanging off. Um, bleeding pretty good. And um, did you, after, once the fight was over, once the assault was over, did you have a conversation with the defendant? Did he talk to you? No, I didn't have a conversation. I did go back into the bar because I did not. Once once I got free of the the, uh, the mob scene out there, I, I got back through the bar door and I, I asked the barkeep directly and everybody in that general area, somebody call the police, I've been hurt, I, I, need, to, I need help. And um, they, they told me to leave. They told you to leave. Who's they? The barkeep, um, all of the yeah, uh, patrons of the bar. Was the defendant in there, in the bar, while this was happening? Uh, yeah, most people went back in. Okay. Do you know for sure whether or not he was in the bar when you were in there asking somebody to call the police? Uh, I can't be certain. Okay. Now, what happened? <coughs> now, you said you were bleeding. Was there blood outside on the deck? Yes. Okay, and what happened about that? If you know. I don't know. The, I mean, the, the table and the chairs were knocked over. I was, I was, yeah, I was bleeding all over the place. So the uh, when, I, when I went to go back in, people were picking stuff up. And uh, uh, people, I think they were angry that I, that I was making a mess in there. And they were quite clear they wanted me to leave. They didn't want the incident reported. Um, they just wanted me to leave and go away. Did the defendant, did you ever tell the defendant, don't call the police, I've already done that? No. Okay. Because you hadn't called the police, correct? No, no, I hadn't called the police yet. Now, the two individuals who were assaulting to you, did you later determine who those individuals were? 
Yes. Who was that? Uh, Peter Fish and Arrow and Aaron Lewis. Oh. Lewis. What was the last name? Aaron Lewis. Uh, the first person. Fisk and Arrow. Sorry, I don't know if I'm saying that right. back inside. You said it was about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hodgson inside at that point? I believe so. Yes, it was. Okay. And so, uh, nothing further. Do you have a question? Actually, I, I do know her. Um, but, um, 
you, um, you were asked about your statements. You made three statements to the police, is that correct? Two. I have, uh, I believe I have three. I can show them to you. Okay. Uh, the first one you made was, uh, do you remember making a statement on May 1st? I remember the, um, <coughs> that would be the next day. So. Excuse me, I'm going to object this. This is outside the scope of redirecting. I'll allow it. Thank you. Um, what was your answer to the question? I believe I made a statement that night. On so, April 30th? Yeah, so I guess it would have been May 1st because it was after 12 o'clock. That would be the first statement. It was, it was difficult. I was upset. Um, May I have a kid? Is your honor? You made a, state, a second statement, did you not? Yes. Do you remember when you made that statement? No. Maybe a few days later. May I approach you? Do you recognize that statement? Yes. Do you see the date on that? May 3rd. Nowhere on that, in that statement do you mention Mr. Hodgson being on the front porch area, is that correct? It's true. May I approach? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I just asked if I could approach you, of course. Thank you. <coughs> Made a third statement. Mr. Green? Two more times, Your Honor. See the date on that statement? May 6th. This was um, six days after the event happened, is that correct? Yes. This is when your, your memory was least clear, would that be fair to say? I wouldn't say that. I'd say as the, when you spend a few days after the event, things start coming even clearer, I would say. You start putting things together, you start remembering things that you wouldn't have originally thought of especially at the time I made the statement, I was just barely a few hours earlier, punched many, many times. So you get a, you get a few days to think about it, you might remember things you didn't normally remember. <coughs> really remember it was clear after six days, not less clear. I, I feel like it was, yeah, I feel like the event was uh, clear in my mind. Why did you write three reports, or three statements, over the course of a week, rather than one statement? Because at the time I issued the statement, I don't believe my physical condition was uh, such that I felt like sitting there and uh, trying to put everything down. I was most concerned about the people that attacked me and ran off. I what about on May 3rd? Why didn't you write a foolish statement at that point? Well, I issued the statements as I remembered the facts and as they were asked of me. So you didn't, the, the things that you put in each report, you only wrote them down as you remembered them? I wrote them down as, a, as I thought they were of most importance um, after. And as they were asked of you? Yeah, as, as, yeah. It's only in this statement, this, this last statement on May 6th, that you finally mentioned anything about Mr. Hodgson. <coughs> um, and you said you made eye contact with George. Um, why did you not ever put that in a, a report? I didn't, think it, I didn't think it was pertinent. He never hit me. I was most concerned and angry with the people that had attacked me. George never attacked me. So I didn't know that it was pertinent information. Understood. One more time, Your Honor, to approach. Thank you. I'll take that back Mr. Green. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Nothing further this morning. Thank you, Mr. Green. Please be excused.
or remain in Poland as he desired? Give the objection. No objection. Mr. Green, Mr. Green you as the alleged victim can stay in the courtroom, but if at any point in time you want to leave, you need to get somewhere to get free to leave. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Green. Thank you, Your Honor. Please state your name and spell your last name. Peter Fioschinaro, F-I-A-S-C-O-N-A-R-O. And? Do it again for me. Keep your voice up a little. You're soft-spoken, and I think the record may have a problem. Do your best. That's all I can ask you. Peter Fioschinaro, F-I-A-S-C-O-N-A-R-O. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Fioschinaro, F-I-A-S-C-O-N-A-R-O. Were you um, at Palmer's Tavern back in April of last year, about April 30th? Yes. Okay. And did you get involved in a physical altercation that night? Excuse yes. Excuse me. Can I see both of you? I just need to establish something. Yes, I was. Were you dispatched to Palmer's Tavern? Yes, I was. Why? Uh, for a fight in progress. Did you respond there? Yes, I did. Okay. And when you got down there, did you meet with the victim? I did. Did you ID him? Yes, I did. As who? Jonathan Green. And what observations did you make of him? I uh, noticed that his nose and his lip were bloody and uh, his shirt was 
gathered up a little bit. Okay. Now, did you speak to him about what had happened? Yes, I did. Okay. And after you had a conversation with Mr. Green about what had happened, did you have occasion to interview George Hodge? Yes, I did. Do you know who he is? Yes, I did. Before, at that night, did you already know who he was? Yes, I did. Who is he? He's the owner of Palmer's Tavern. And is George Hodgson present in the courtroom this Yes, morning? he is. Can you point him out for the judge, please? He's wearing the blue shirt with a blue, uh, royal blue undershirt and a jacket. Court take notice of Without objection. Thank you. Now, did you have a conversation with the defendant about the assault? Yes, I did. Okay. And initially, what did he tell you? Initially, uh, the defendant stated that he had no idea what happened. He was inside the bar. So he indicated to you he had not seen the assault, is that what he said? Correct. Okay. Um, did he say he could identify anyone who was involved in the he assault? He did not. Now, subsequently, did you... Um, I'm sorry. When you spoke with the defendant, did you ask him whether or not he had called 911? Yes, I did. What did he tell you? Uh, the defendant stated that he did not because he did not know what happened. Okay. He had no idea the fight had taken place. Now, later on, did you have a subsequent conversation with him about whether or not he had called 911? Yes, I did. Relevance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Objection on the relevance grounds, Your Honor. This is not relevant to the complaints. Yes, it is, Your Honor. It's relevant right. to um, that the offer of proof is that the um, defendant is telling Officer Nato that he didn't know who committed the assault um, and he didn't call 911, which is relevant to the hindering apprehension, Your Honor. That he, and he's, the initial statement he gave to Officer Nato is he didn't call 911 because he didn't know what happened. Subsequently, he changed that statement about why he did not call 911. Can you answer the question if you remember? Repeat it? Yes, please. Did you have a second conversation with him? Yes, I, yes okay. I did. Okay, and what did he tell you the second time? Can, can I ask a question? When was the second conversation as opposed to the first? The first was when we immediately arrived on scene after talking with the victim on April 30th. On April 30th, and the uh, subsequent uh, time I spoke with uh, the defendant was a little later in the investigation. About a little later, uh, approximately an hour after the incident had taken place. Okay. So you're still thinking, you know, you're still down at Palmer's Tavern. Correct. Okay. And the second time you spoke with the defendant, what did he tell you about calling 911? He stated that he did not have time to call 911 because he thought other people had already called. Now, subsequent to um, your investigation at Palmer's Tavern, did you have a, an additional conversation with the defendant? Yes, I did. And do you remember, without looking at a statement, when that happened? It was a, few, a day or two after the incident had taken place. I don't remember the exact date. If I showed you the statement form, would that refresh your recollection about the date that you took the statement yes, from the would. defendant? Yes, it would. May I approach the room? And I just asked you to look at the date on the statement form. Okay. Having looked at that date, does that refresh your recollection? About yes, when? it does. And when was that conversation? 4 30, 2010. What? Actually, may I approach again, Your Honor? What? There's a second date on there. Oh, Hold I'm on. sorry. Yes. 5 7, 2010. So, is that the day that you said that convers subsequent conversation? I guess it'll be the third conversation with the defendant? Yes, I did. Okay. And where did that conversation happen, if you recall? Uh, it took place at the defendant's residence. Okay. And he provided a written statement for you? Uh, yes, he did. Okay. Who wrote this statement? I wrote the statement. Uh, this, uh, the defendant asked me to write the statement because he had a hard time spelling. So did he tell you what to write? How yes. did that happen? How did this um, statement come about? I. He told me what happened, and I scribed on the statement form what uh, the defendant was telling me. Did he sign the form? Yes, he did. Okay. And do you recall specifically what this statement says, word for word? No, word for word, but I remember what the statement says. Okay. <clears throat> Your Honor, the state would like to enter this as states one in approach. Any objection? Okay. Without objection, states one is Go 
May I have that back here? Thank you. Now, may I approach the witness, Your Honor? I'd like to show you that form. And at the top of the form, um, does it set out a notice to anyone who's writing a written statement about it the does. consequences of filing a false statement? It does. What does that say? Says, in general. In general, it says that if, uh, per RSA 641-2, false swearing, um, a person is guilty of a misdemeanor if he or she makes a false statement under oath or affirmation or swearing or affirmation the truth of such statement previously made or he or she does not believe the statement to be true. Thank you, sir. And again, Mr. Hudson signed that form in your presence? Yes, he did. Nothing further this way, Mr. Hunter. Just one question. Did you take his oath or something when you gave the statement? <clears throat> I did not. Um, the, the statement is uh, for so us. My only question is, did you take an oath? Did he sign this under oath to your knowledge? He did not sign it under oath. I had him read the, uh, reread the statement and acknowledge that everything was true. And if it was true to what he had told me to, to sign the bottom of the statement. He received a uh, training as an officer. Yes, I was. And part of that training has been in the preparation for these reports, has not been? It has. And you've been trained to prepare accurate reports? Correct. And you've been trained to prepare, prepare complete reports? Mm -hmm. And you wrote a report related to the incident of Palmer's Tavern for April 30th and in the morning of May 1st, did you not? Yes, I did. Do you remember, you remember writing that report? Yes, I did. I probably should have copied that report. Do you recognize it? Yes. May I approach that? Mm -hmm. Is that your report? Yes, it is. It was first entered on May 1st, is that correct? Correct. This entry was made by you, was it not? Yes. How do you know it was made by you? Uh, I, had, I put my uh, name at the top of it and I closed it up with my signature. If you look at the top, it says that there's a word on the top of it that says enter and it has a date and a time. Do you see that? Correct. And then by that it says entry ID. What does what it say to entry ID? My initials. Your initials. So is that how you know that it was entered by you? Correct. This report was later signed off by Officer Peterson. Is that Objection, correct? Objection, Your Honor. I don't know if this witness knows whether or not Sergeant Peterson signed off on this. Okay, I can ask you a different way. On the top left is the word approved. Is that correct? Yes. What's the date next to that word? Uh, si uh, 0601-2010. So this was signed up. This end. So uh, next to, do you see the word approval ID? Correct. And what, what are the initials next to approval ID? RJP. Whose initials are those? Sergeant Peterson's. So this this report was approved a month later after you wrote it. Is that correct? Objection. Those are not his initials. I don't believe he has personal knowledge. I'm going to testify that he has personal knowledge. No. I'm not 100% sure. Um, there's a uh, there's the words modified mm -hmm. on, on the top left. Do you see that? Yes. Um, and there's a date there. Do you see the date? Yes. What is the date? 0603-2010. And that is two days after the approval date. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And there's the words modified ID. Do you see that? Yes. Are those your initials next to the modification? No, they're not. The modification was made by someone other than you. I do not know if there was any modifications made to this report. Mm -hmm. I have no knowledge of any modifications being made. Okay. But you do see the word, you do see modified with a date, and you do see that it would be modified AD as an initial other than yours. Yes. Made on June 3rd, 2010. Yes. Let's talk a bit about the content of your report. Uh, you, you say in your report that John Green told you the suspects had left the scene. Yes. You know what, I'll withdraw that question. Um, uh, your report says Mr. Hodgson told you that night that he didn't see what happened because he was behind the bar, is that correct? Correct. He never changed that statement.
He did not change the statement that he's uh, saying that he saw what exactly happened, correct? He stated, my question was, he stated that he didn't see what happened, is that correct? Correct. And he never made a statement other that would contradict that, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Um, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the timeline of events that night. You waited out, you arrived at the establishment after you received the call, is that correct? Correct. And you arrived with Sergeant Kelly, is that correct? Uh, Sergeant Kelly was in a different vehicle, but we arrived approximately at the same time. And you and Sergeant Kelly waited outside the bar, is that correct? Before? Yes, we did. And were any other officers present when you and Officer, uh, when Sergeant Kelly arrived? No. So no other officers were present. You waited outside the bar. Correct. Did you allow anyone to leave or enter the bar? <clears throat> no. No. And how long did you stay there waiting outside the bar, not allowing anyone to come or come? I'm just not understanding. How long did you, Sergeant Kelly, stay outside, not letting anyone leave or go, come or go, before you entered the park? We were there for a few hours investigating the... So you waited outside for a few hours before you entered the park? We had, we had the, uh, the victim outside the bar. We didn't have to go inside the bar. You waited outside for a few hours before you entered the bar? Yes, we waited for additional units. To How many hours? Not long after the other additional How many units. hours? How many hours? How many hours total, or how many hours we waited before additional units? How many hours did you, Sergeant Kelly, wait outside the bar before you entered? Probably an hour. So you say two hours, hour. you mean one hour? About an hour, a little okay. longer. So you, wait, you waited outside, and no one was allowed to leave during that hour, is that correct? Correct. And you had not apprehended a suspect, is that correct? No, we have not. So there could have been someone, there could have been people who had assaulted Mr. Green inside the bar that you had locked the patrons in, is that correct? Objection or irrelevance? No, probably not. At that time, we had uh, been uh, notified that the suspects had left the scene. So at you that didn't time, check whether the suspects left the scene yourself, did you? We were told that the suspects had left the oh, scene. I'll repeat the question. You didn't check whether the suspects had left the scene yourself, did you? No, we did not. So you locked, how many patients were in that bar that night? About 30 to 45, roughly. So you locked 30 to 45 patrons inside, with possibly with two suspected assault? Again, when we came assault. to the scene, we had been notified that the suspects you had want to left. the questions in there? Yes, please. Okay. So you stated you, you locked 30 to 45 patrons inside a bar with what could have been two people suspected of an assault? Yes. When you finally entered the bar, who, who had shown up that, uh, what kind of backup had shown up? Uh, we had a, an additional where police officer and state troopers. I have to ask real quick, Mr. Nato. You didn't. You, you didn't could just let him finish this answering the question. Additional where? Okay. Additional uh, additional where unit showed up, and um, also uh, state police had showed okay. up on scene. Who was the additional where unit? Uh, officer Montplaisir. And how many state police had shown up? I believe there was three or four, I'm not, I don't recall off the top of my head, there was at least three or four additional state troopers that had shown up on scene. I have to ask, I, I read your report, and I assume that you read it. <coughs> Nowhere in that report do you mention locking patrons the bar for an hour with the assailants. Um, is there a reason you left that in your report? This, the, locking the patrons inside the bar um, was to investigate the crime that had taken place. Well, that is not, I'm sorry, please continue. Uh, was to investigate the crime that was taking place, not anything to do with the testimony that or the statement that the uh, defendant had gave us. What kind of uh, investigation did you perform the hour that you stayed outside? We had talked to the victim, we had talked to the defendant, and we had talked to some patrons outside on the, on the, on the porch. Now you, you, you also said in your report you waited outside of the establishment until the liquor commission arrived, is that correct? Correct. So you didn't enter until the liquor commission arrived? Correct. Is the liquor commission important for the investigation of the assault? We were asked by liquor enforcement to, to have to keep order inside the bar 
make sure nobody left so they can do an uh, investigation themselves. You're asking people what rooms at the bar, but you didn't enter? Correct. Okay. Um, why did you call liquor enforcement in order to investigate an assault? Is that, the, is that generally their area of expertise? No. Liquor enforcement was called for purposes of that it was a bar incident that happened at the bar that we had to call. Uh, Sergeant Kelly had called liquor enforcement to assist in, in doing so because it was a bar. Doing so what? Uh, he asked, to clarify, he asked liquor enforcement because it was a, a, a bar uh, establishment where they served alcohol to have liquor enforcement come and check check out the bar. For check their, out the bar for what? I'm not 100% sure. You'll have to ask. You were called so, for an assault, right? Yes. And you don't know why you called it. enforcement? He did not call liquor enforcement. He already testified. I did not call them. Yes, Your Honor, I can refer to the So you were there to investigate an assault? Correct. But you don't, believe my question, you didn't know why Officer Kelly called liquor enforcement related to an assault? Correct. Not at the, not at the time. Your report says that you, quote unquote, asked the patient, the patient to stay inside the bar when you checked the perimeter. Um, if, if, if they would have denied this, quote unquote, request, and tried to leave over time. Objection, it's not relevant at all. No, I'll follow. You can answer the question, officer. You remember? I was I was instructed uh, by my supervisor to make sure that everybody stayed inside the bar, uh, to make sure that no witnesses, possible witnesses, have left. Do you need me to repeat the question? You asked what would have happened if they had left the bar. I'm not sure. We probably would have been detained just. To Everybody was being detained at that time. But you, so the entire bar would be detained, correct? 45 patients would be detained. Objection, Your Honor. It's hypothetical and it's not relevant. No, I'm going it's exactly after what you just said. Excuse me, folks. You already answered the question. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you write criminal history on every single patient of that bar, you can check. Objection, Your Honor. No offense. Attorney, what are you going to uh, this has to do with. Um, just by off, but just tell me where you're going with this. Sure, Your Honor. This, this has to do with um, what uh, we believe is the um, motivation of Mr. Hodgson being charged. We don't believe it has anything to do with the main question. All right, I'll allow it for that one. Let's let this go. Thank you. You ran criminal history on every single perpetration of that button. Yeah, it's been known to uh, have. Uh, Motorcycle outlaws inside the bar and other, Sorry, and, and other. I, there's been known to have other uh, motorcycle outlaw groups inside the bar. Uh, we did not know who was inside the bar, so we did run uh, checks on people inside the bar. Thank you. How long did you uh, over? You stated that they were came for an hour was waited outside. How long was it before the last patron was left and allowed, was allowed to leave? Approximately. 3, 3.30. Sorry, three and a half hours, do you mean? Yes. 3.30 in the morning. Three, three and a half hours. And you, you arrived around 11 o'clock, is that correct? Correct. So that means that they were detained there until about 2.30 a.m.? Approximately. The bar's close at 1, do they not? They do. Did you make any arrests that night? Um, we did. I'm sorry? We did. Uh, related to the fight that happened? Uh, related, not related to the fight. Let's talk a little bit about Mr. Hodgen's written statement and the charge of unsworn falsification. Uh, Mr. Hodgen has a written statement related to events that happened on that, is that correct? Correct. And you wrote the statement, is that correct? Correct. And this statement lines up exactly with what Mr. Hodgen had told you the night of the incident. No, it does not. No, it does not. No, it does not. Well, let me ask you this. Does he, I'll let you the question and rephrase it. Does he, did he ask, um, did he state the night of the incident that he didn't see the fight? He stated that he had no idea what had happened, and his statement that he had right had changed. So he stated the night of the incident that he didn't see the fight. He said that he did not see anything or hear anything at that time of the incident at the fight the bar. Okay. And in, in his statement, uh, it states that he heard fight. He ran outside to grab the defendant paper towels, 
to, to wipe the blood off his face and then went inside the bar and asked the bartender for the phone to call 911, which previously he stated that he did not call 911 because he didn't know it happened and he did not call 911 because he didn't, uh, didn't have time to call 911. I'm going to take issue with your, um, the way that you describe what she says in the report. You said you ran outside and provided paper towels. That's what you said in the statement? You said that he went outside or he, he went to the victim and provided paper towels to the victim. Okay, well, did he go outside or did he go to the victim? Is it the victim? What it, said, what it says. What I'm asking you. Um, this, if I can look at the report, I can tell you exactly what it says. Um, it states that he gave paper towels to the victim. Okay. That's, a, that's a rather key fact. Ma'am, first of all, you're referring to state exhibit one. <clears throat> this is the yes, yes, one. Thank you. <clears throat> it states that he was able to get outside. He said he saw the, uh, the victim with blood on his face, and I gave him paper towels. I asked the bartender for a phone to call 911. John, uh, the defendant, uh, the victim, I'm sorry, said he had already called 911. So, as far as he's going out, running outside, um, not running outside, but he was able to get outside. Where does it say? It states right here. I was able to get outside. I saw the victim with blood on his face. I gave him paper towels. In the sense before that, what that? I was washing dishes behind the bar when somebody yelled "fight." By the time I was able to get outside, I saw the victim with blood on his face. I gave him paper towels, and I asked the bartender. For the phone to call 911. So the statement doesn't say that he saw the fight. He got outside in time. I didn't say that he saw the fight. I stated that he heard fight and went outside to provide paper towels to the victim. Which earlier he stated that he had no idea what had happened. And then the same night he stated that he did not have time to call 911 because he thought people had already called. So he stated that he already he thought people had already called. And here in the statement, he says that he asked the bartender to call 911. He did because he thought John Green had already called. In the statement, says that. <clears throat> Correct. But his statement that he didn't see the fight, that did not change. Has not changed. Correct. Now, the you took the statement a full month later, is that correct? Not a full month later, it was approximately a few days after the incident. See a date here of April 30th and then another date of uh, May 7th. Okay, so it was a week later, my month said. Took the statement a week later. Correct. And what was the purpose of having him sign a statement that he had already made relating to not having seen that? He had not filled out, we, we asked um, to have a written statement of his account of what happened at the bar. The reason we have everybody signed, sign their statements, especially since he asked me to write it since he had poor spelling, um, I, I asked them to reread, confirm that everything on there was true to his ability, uh, to his knowledge, and I had him sign the statement. You waited a month to, to uh, ask for an arrest for arrest warrant, Mr. Hodgman, did you not? Or it was a month. Were you present on the night or the day that Mr. Hodgman was arrested? Yes, it was. It was about a month after the incident, is that correct? Approximately. How many, how many officers were present when Mr. Hodgman was arrested? Three. I believe. I'm not, a, I don't recall. How many reporters were present? Um, I believe one. One reporter was present? Mr. Hodgman is handicapped, is that correct? Yes, he is. Has he missing a leg? He's not missing a leg. One of his legs is. He, he walks very slowly. Correct. You thought you needed three officers to arrest him? Not to arrest him, just to make, uh, make sure that if there was any other issues at the bar, that other, other officers could assist assist me with other issues not related to not related to his arrest. Go ahead. Did you say there was one reporter present? I believe so. Um, I believe there was one from the union leader, but I'm not exactly sure who he was or how he got there at that time. Okay, go ahead. Um, 
cross-examination between Hipple as you mm -hmm. use the word locked in terms of the patrons of the bar. Did you, anyone lock the door of that bar? No, they okay. no, we did not. So that's a, a term of art. You know, they weren't physically locked into that bar. Correct. And in addition, um, in terms of the investigation you conducted while you were waiting for state police, um, I, I believe you testified on cross-examination that you spoke to the defendant while you were waiting for state police? Yes, I did. Okay. And uh, the victim? Correct. And other patrons? Correct. Okay. And did the defendant ever indicate to you that the suspects were still in the box? No, he did not. Did anyone tell you that? No, they did not. As a matter of fact, the information you got from everyone present is that they had left. Isn't that what you testified to? Correct. <clears throat> And again, um, for emphasis, when you took the initial statement from the defendant, what did he tell you in terms of the fight itself and having contact with the victim? He said he did not hear or see anything. He had no idea that the fight had even taken place. Okay. And that he was inside the bar the whole time? Correct. Okay. And his written statement was then submitted. I have nothing further than Yes, Your Honor. Anyone try to leave during the hour that you were outside? People asked to leave. We, we advised them to stay, that we that were conducting an investigation. And you said that they tried to leave you were detained, that they were being detained? They were being detained, yes. So they weren't free to leave? Not at the time. We were conducting an investigation. Uh, court's indulgence for one minute. that uh, Mr. Hodgson told you that he didn't know uh, that a fight had taken place. Is that in your report? Yes, it is. I don't see it in your report. Can you point it out? Yes, it can. Right here. I'm sorry. Go ahead and read it. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, since we're talking to George Hodgson to see what had happened, George advised Sergeant Kelly and myself he did not know what had happened because he was inside the bar. So he didn't know what had happened. That doesn't mean he didn't know the fight had taken place. Those are two different, different things. Would you agree? Yes, sir. By talking to him, he indicated that he had no acknowledgement that the fight had taken place. It's not in your report. Or I... They're not correct in saying it's on your report? It's not stated in that way, no, but he, it states that he did not know what had happened. Thank you. May I approach you for witness and retreat? And may I have this uh, marker as to the one, please? I have an objection. Without objection. No, what I do object. Officer, what is it, first of all? Uh, this is uh, Officer Nato's police report. He's, uh, he's identified it as such. Why do I turn the entire report? I believe that the on top, um, we, we covered that the uh, it, the uh, report was entered by Officer Nato. It was then modified by someone who wasn't present at the night in question. I think that's relevant. I noted those facts. Okay. Thank you. Nothing. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. May the officer remain in the courtroom with the original statement? No. 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 This is question. The only person who remains in the courtroom is the elected victim. Thank you. Say call Sergeant Hill. Your Honor, I believe we have um, several public defenders here. I don't know if we um, Attorney Esposito. Can, you come up, Can I see counsel up here, please?
comes to us now. Sorry. Yes, I do. Can you please state your name and spell your last name? Sergeant Joseph Kelly, K E L E Y. How are you employed? I'm a sergeant with the Wearing Edge Police Department. And how long have you been employed by the town of Wearing? Since 2005. And how long have you been a certified police officer in the state of New Hampshire? In New Hampshire since 1999. And were you certified in any other state? Yes, I was in Massachusetts in 1998. And were you so employed by the Ware Police Department as a sergeant on April 30th of last year, approximately 11.30 in the evening? Yes, I was. Were you dispatched anywhere? Uh, yes, I was. I was dispatched to assist Officer Nadu uh, at Karma's Tavern on uh, Route 114. And for what? For a reported uh, assault progress. Did you respond there? I did. Okay. And when you responded there, did you speak to anyone? I did. Who was that? I spoke with uh, Mr. John Green. And he was the victim? Yes, he was. Did you make observations of his person? I did. Uh, upon my contact with him, I noticed that Mr. Green had blood covering his face. Okay. And after you spoke with him, did you have occasion to speak with the owner of the cabin, George Hodgson? I did. Okay. And is that individual present in the courtroom this morning? He is. Can you point him out for the record, please? Uh, yes, he's uh, wearing a black jacket sitting at the, uh, the defense table. Court take notice of witness identified the defendant? Any objections? Now, as you began investigating the assault on John Green, did you, you said you spoke with the defendant? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you ask him about what he had seen? Yes, I did. What did he tell you? He indicated Initially, that, what did he tell you? Yeah. He indicated that he was, uh, he was assaulted by what he believed was two subjects. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the defendant. What did the defendant tell you about what he had seen, George Hodgson, about the assault? Okay. Yeah, he had said that um, he didn't see uh, much because he had gone out back to, uh, I believe it was to take care of some dishes or something. And so he said he hadn't seen much about the fight? That's correct. Did you talk to him about um, whether or not he had called the police? I did. So what did he tell you? He said he did. He did not call the police? That's accurate. Did he indicate why? Uh, he said that he wasn't involved in it. He was out back. Had, did the defendant indicate to you that anyone had called the police from that bar? He said they did not. And again, did he tell you why they had not done that? He didn't say. Okay. But he definitively told you he had not seen that fight. That's what he told me, yes. And he had not been outside when that assault occurred. That's accurate, yes. Okay. I have nothing further to explain, Mr. Arnold. Mr. Kelly, how long have you been an officer? You, you said you've been an officer for a while. Did you see training as an officer? Uh, 
Yes, it's received numerous amounts of training. Part of that training has been on preparation of police reports. That's accurate, yeah. And you've been trained to prepare accurate reports? That's accurate, yeah. And you've been trained to prepare complete reports? Absolutely. And you referred to your, you, the, what, Ms., uh, what Attorney Bond just asked you about, you wrote in a report, is that correct? Yes. Did you write a report um, related to this event that happened on April 30th into the morning on May 1st? I don't remember the exact time that I wrote it, but I did write a report. You did write a report regarding yep. this event. That's accurate, yes. Okay. Um, if I showed you that report, would you recognize it? Sure. May I first look at you? You may. Is this your report? This is not the uh, report in this, in this case. Is the, um, this is not the report in this case? No, sir. Uh, why do you say that? This this report uh, that that you handed to me was a uh, was approved by Sergeant Peterson in this case uh, and was sent out inaccurately uh, and was not a completed report um, of the accurate events that took place in the sense of. So you you wrote th that piece of paper that you have has has writing on it that you wrote. That's accurate. Yes. Okay. And you wrote that on uh, May first. Yes. Okay. And it was approved by Sergeant Peterson. Is that correct? Yeah, Sergeant Peterson uh, was a was a new sergeant approving reports at the time, and my lieutenant, Lieutenant James Carney, is the one that actually approves my reports. But he had had uh, Sergeant Peterson doing uh, or learning report approval, and it was supposed to go back to um, Lieutenant Carney, mm -hmm. and it did not. I guess it got sent out in an error by the prosecutor, but it was not the uh, completed report in this case. Okay, so this is something that you wrote. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, did you did you uh, modify this report later on and uh, have a completed report or more complete report? Yes. After uh, what ended up happening was Lieutenant Carney had got, and I should actually give you some uh, some brief information. The uh, I have a uh, a learning disability problem with spelling. Mm -hmm. I've had my whole life, and uh, we have a, uh, a process in our police department by which uh, I've requested, even through college and now into law school, that any of my be it in school professors or in the police department, have them review my reports because sometimes it doesn't pick up um, on the uh, on the spelling errors. And what happened in this case is that we, um, I you know, give my reports to the lieutenant. In this case, what happened was the sergeant went in not knowing that the report went to the lieutenant, thought that it was a completed report, and sent it out um, to I guess to you. Right, so you're saying that uh, Sergeant Pearson does not approve reports. He does, he's not he's not an approver for my reports, no. Does he approve other reports? He d now he does. Again, at the time, he was just learning um, how to do the report. So at the time, he, did, he wouldn't have approved anyone else's reports at the time? I can't say as though he would have approved other people's I'm surprised reports. you if I told you that he approved um, all the other, Mr. NATO's, uh, Officer NATO's, and Officer Mark Pleasure's reports. Objection on your relevance, and I'll allow it. It, sure, it wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, again, he was he was learning the uh, report approval process, and um, quite frankly, there was a uh, breakdown of communication between uh, Sergeant Peterson and Lieutenant Carney with respect to um, my my report, and then the process by which uh, he he approves my reports and recommends uh, uh, grammatical corrections and so on. Okay, so that was maybe Officer Peterson uh, did approve this report, and what you have in your hand there was something that you wrote um, dated May 1st, and it has, I believe it has your signature on it. It does, yes. Okay. Now, you um, submitted another report, I received another report in the schedule, may I approach the witness room? Is this your report? Actually, I'll leave this with you. Thank you. Yes, it is. Okay. What's, what is the date on that report? The, which date are you referring to, sir? The date that it was first entered. Entered, um, says 5-1-2010. And it's the same date that the first report that I showed you was also entered. Is that correct? It's the, it's the same date that it, that it shows entered, yes. But I, I should let you know. I don't, I don't know if you know how uh, IMC is the record system that we you utilize. answer the question. Okay. I'm attempting to give you an answer, sir. Excellent. Is the, um, so we're looking here at the... Uh, the second report I handed you is a modified report of the first report. The modified that's accurate. Version, the that's modified accurate. Version of the first yes, that's okay. accurate, sir. And it shows a modified date on May 4th. 
Um, oh, actually, actually, if you look at the top left of the second report, uh, there's the word modified. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Can you tell me the date uh, next to that word? Which report are we referring to? The, the second one. Well, when you say the second one, I'm the second one that I handed you. Oh, the page. second the one you handed. Okay. We'll do it this way. The first one I handed you is one page long. The second one I handed you, I believe, is two pages long. Okay. So let's go by the two page report. Yes, sir. Uh, that was. Uh, you see the word entered there? Yes, I do. Uh, what is the date there? It says five one two thousand and ten at four fifty four in the morning. Thank you. And uh, while we're while we're on this subject, uh, the first the one page report, there also on the top left of the word entered. Is that correct? It does. And uh, that is uh, what's the date there? It says 5 1 2010, it says 4 54 in the morning. Okay. Uh, this, uh, for the first one page report, uh, it has the word modified. Is that, do you see that? Yes, I do. On the top left? Uh, what is the date that? It says 5 1 2010 at 4 55 in the morning. And next to that, it says the word modified ID. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And uh, what's next to modified ID? Yeah, my initials, JFK. Your initials. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you look at the two page report, do you see the word modified? Yes, I do. And it has the word, uh, it um, has a date next to it. Can you tell me what the date is? It's 5-4-2010. Uh, okay. And it's next to that is the word modified ID. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And what is next to that? It, it has the initials RJP. Are those your initials? Uh, no, sir, they are not. Okay. So we have two reports here. Um, the second one, the two-page report being modified on 5-4. Um, what surprised you that they're... I don't mean to interrupt. I need yeah. to ask. If you know, Sergeant, whose initials are the IJP? I do, Your Honor. It's uh, Sergeant Robert Peterson. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just needed to know the answer to that. Go ahead, man. What surprised you if I told you that there were that kind of contradictions in these two reports? No, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Okay. Uh, the, first, the first report states that there was one suspect. Would you find that accurate? The one page report, and I'll give you as much time as you need to prove your reports. Uh, the first, the one page report said that there's, there was an un unknown male subject, in the case of a singular. So Where exactly are you, sir? Sure, we can go right uh, after it's the second sentence and the, I'm sorry, the first sentence and the second full paragraph. Right okay. We can do that one. Right? I'm fine. Go, go ahead. Okay. So, would you, is it accurate that you stated there was an unknown male subject in the singular? I would say that it, that's what I wrote in the report. That's what it is for. Okay. Um, now, in the report that was modified by um, Sergeant Peterson, it states that there were two unknown male subjects while inside the bar. Can you verify that that's accurate? That, that's what it says, yes. Okay. Uh, in the first report, the unmodified report, um, you state that uh, Mr. Green was assaulted while inside the bar. Uh, where are you, sir? I'm sorry, in the, uh, my, my mistake, my mistake. In the second, the modified report, you state that Mr. Green was assaulted while inside the bar. Again, uh, where are you? I will tell you where I am. Give me just a second. Um, that, would, that would also be in the, uh, be the second sentence and second full paragraph. Yes. Is there anywhere in the report that you mentioned that Mr. Green or the fight took place inside the book? Well, in the unmodified report? Oh. In the unmodified report, is there anywhere that you mentioned that the fight took place inside the book? Rather than outside the bar, as we previously No way that I see, sir. Uh, in the unmodified report, the one-page report, it states that the it was, uh, first uh, sentence of the second full paragraph, assaulted by an unknown male subject. Uh, do you see that, that the subject was unknown? Yes, I do. Okay, and these, in the modified report, um, it states their names. Do you see that? Where are we speaking of, sir? Um, uh, here at the bottom of the second paragraph, it says uh, Peter... Uh, gives, gives an, the advice of second subject was named Eric. That's in the, the middle of the which, second paragraph. Which report are we on? Uh, We're sorry. on the modified report. Modified, the, the, the accurate report. report in this. You're talking about the, the two page report, sir? We're talking about the one that was modified on 5 4, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't. If you, if you, if you look through the, I'll give you time to look through it. The second, sure. the second full paragraph, you mentioned the names of both, both suspects. Okay. 
Yes, I see that, sir. Um, the, uh, the unmodified report says that they left the area in a vehicle. Um, that would be in the first sentence of the second full paragraph. On which report are we at, sir? I'm sorry. The unmodified report. The unmodified report. And you said where, where exactly is it against? Well, I'm just going to object because the first report is modified. And you even testified to that, that it's modified on 5.20. Oh, I can clarify. The report that was modified by you rather than by some Why don't we say the one page report and the two page report? And I think I'm simple. Or I did young. I just can't One page report, second sentence, first uh, the first time, second full paragraph, two done. I gave my objection. That wasn't an objection. Suggested that he call the report. I, I, my objection is he's referring to the. I well not after, but my objection is referring to the one page report is the two page report is modified when the one page report is also modified. Rephrase the question. Yes, Your Honor. The one page report that was not modified by Sergeant Peterson uh, states that uh, in the. Am I correct in saying that it states that in the second in the second paragraph first sentence? That the suspects left the area in the vehicle. Well, with respect to it being modified with Sergeant Peterson, I, I can tell you that. I think you can just answer the question. It specifically, it doesn't say, I just want to point out that it doesn't say that it was modified. Just when you enter into, you should understand, sir, when you enter into IMC, anytime you go in, even a review or report, it says the word modified. Just so you understand, just don't want you to be under the understanding that Sergeant Peterson was the one that actually changed the police report. Okay, so the. Second uh, full paragraph, first sentence says that the suspects left the area in a vehicle. Yes. And the two page report, the one with the modified ID RJP, says that their location was unknown. I'll point out where that says. That the, the second to the last sentence of the second paragraph. On the first page or second page, sir? Is it second to the last paragraph? Uh, second to the last um, sentence of the second paragraph. Of the second paragraph. It's, it states that the location is unknown by the time that they left the airplane. Yes, that's accurate, sir. surprise me at all. I, I wouldn't be able to say what Mr. Green testified to or not. Given that your report states that a third fight occurred inside the bar? I'm, I'm sorry, so you're asking me a question? Yeah, given, does it surprise you given that your your um, reports stated that the fight occurred inside the bar? Um, doing this for the past 12 years, I, I would have no idea what, uh, you know, wouldn't surprise me at all what somebody would say on the stand. I'm, I'm asking about your report. I, was, I don't think that was a question he asked me. He asked me if it would be surprised me if uh, what he testified to on the stand. I, I would have no idea what he testified to on the stand. Sir. Let's talk a bit about the timeline of events that night. Uh, you waited outside the establishment when you, you, you arrived approximately the same time as Officer Mayo, is that correct? That's accurate, sir, yes. Okay. And uh, how long, and you didn't enter the establishment at that point? No, we didn't. No, we were on the uh, break of the driveway to the um, to the bar is a uh, is a dirt driveway and there's a uh, like an outside porch area where there's tables and that's that's where we're at and like a, I believe there's like a horseshoe pit or some sort of entertainment area off to the left we were right in that area there. Okay. How many people were inside the bar? 
I, I'm not sure the exact numbers are, but there was a numerous amount of people inside. You don't have any kind of idea? I don't remember the exact number, sir, okay. but there was a numerous amount of people inside the park. It was very busy inside there. Uh, were you, were, did you allow anyone to leave during the period that you waited outside for backup? With respect to, we leave the... We'll leave the bar. Was anyone allowed to enter or exit the bar while you and Officer Nato uh, were waiting outside the bar? Uh, well, let me ask you this. Let me back up a bit and provide some background. You sure. Said, you, you said that you two arrived at the bar around the same time. And you said that you didn't enter the bar right away. That's accurate. Uh, what, what, what were you waiting for in order to enter the bar? Well, two, two things were really, you have to understand the, the issue. First thing, I was concerned about Mr. Green and, and needing medical attention. Um, when I saw Mr. Green, he was sitting down in a, like a outside patio set there, and there was blood covering his face. So he looked like he was injured, right? So my thought process immediately was that we needed to uh, summon medical assistance, and I did that. I contacted the Ware Ambulance Fire Ed Dispatch and had them come there. Um, second to that, I was concerned with respect to where any possible suspects may be. Uh, Mr. Green had advised me that uh, he didn't know the people that assaulted him, but he described uh, one of the people as a, a darker colored uh, skin, uh, of possibly of Italian descent. He advised that he was bigger than the other guy. There was a smaller man. He said he thought he had a light colored hair. Um, and he wasn't sure whether they had fled the scene or if they may have been inside the bar. He wasn't sure of their location. Subsequent to that, in talking with Mr. Hodgson, um, he, didn't, he wasn't sure whether they had left the scene or they were inside the bar. He said he didn't know who they were, wasn't able to identify who the people were. So my first thought process, again, was to get medical assistance for Mr. Green, and subsequent to that was to protect the scene and possibly locate any any suspects involved in the incident. Um, so my question was, what were you waiting for outside the bar before you entered the bar? I thought I'd just answer that question, sir. Um, I guess I didn't hear the answer. You, you, were, you, you didn't enter the bar at all because you were trying to seek medical, medical attention from Mr. Green? Correct. Okay, how long did that, how long were you outside the bar before you entered? I would, you know, by the time the ambulance got there, um, and rendered aid and whatnot, it, I would say probably at least a half an hour, if not better. Half an hour? At least. And, you, and um, you entered the bar after a half an hour? Outside? I did say enter the bar, sir. Okay. What did you do after that? Uh, we made contact again and spoke with Mr. Hodge, and again, we were trying to locate who the suspects were that were involved in the assault. That was our number one concern. Uh, once we had taken care of the aid for, excuse me, for Mr. Green. Your number one concern was trying to locate the suspects? Our number one concern was dealing with Mr. Green's so injuries Mr. Green and sub subsequent to that. Yes, sir. That's accurate. And the, um, when you said that you, the suspects could have been inside the bar. That's, that's true. We don't know where they were. Okay. Now, the question I've been trying to get an answer to is how long, how long before, from the time that you arrived at the Palmer's Tavern, how much time lapsed before you entered the bar? Well, I, I clarified that, Your Honor, that it was a half you, it was a half an hour before you entered the bar, and I thought that Officer um, Kelly said that that wasn't what he said. It, right, that's accurate. We we didn't actually enter the bar in a half an hour. I misunderstood his question. We we made contact again with the owner. Uh, we didn't enter the bar for some time thereafter. We were waiting for the New Hampshire uh, Liquor Commission to arrive up there. We made uh, contact with them, and they had indicated that they wanted to uh, come up based upon the fact of the assault and, and also the fact that uh, Mr. Hodgson at the time was not providing all the information for uh, and answering the questions that we were answering him. He essentially wanted us to leave his property. Um, so based upon that fact and the fact uh, that there was an assault that took place, we requested the New Hampshire Liquor Commission come up and we also requested the New Hampshire State Police come because we had numerous patrons that were inside the bar that were yelling uh, uh, statements outside of the door uh, at us. Who called, who called the commission? Our dispatch. We requ I requested. You requested. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Is, do, does Liquor Commission normally help with the investigation of assaults? Liquor Commission in, in alcohol establishments, they do, yes. Okay. Um, now, I'm still waiting for an answer to that first, first question. I'm sorry, could you re-ask your question? I don't remember yes. which one that was. You entered, the time you arrived at Palmer's, how long before you entered? I don't know exactly. Uh, before we, we waited for the liquor commission to get there. Uh, an hour and a half. 
It could have been that long. They were coming from Ringe, New Hampshire, and uh, they told us to remain on scene and to hold um, hold fast and to wait for them to arrive. We had the New Hampshire State Police come. It could have been that long. I, I don't know exactly how long it was, sir. Okay, so it could have been an hour and a half before you entered the bar. It, it may have been, sir. I'm not positive. And uh, we, uh, I don't believe that we covered the fact that no one was allowed to enter or exit the bar. Is that correct? We, we had the, we had the New Hampshire. Sorry, no worries. Uh, we had the uh, New Hampshire State Police that they came up there and, with consulting with them, along with phone conversations with the uh, New Hampshire Liquor Commission, and the fact that we were still attempting to locate the two people that had assaulted um, Mr. Green, or allegedly assaulted Mr. Green. Um, we had formulated the opinion that we needed to ID everybody that was leaving the bar. We needed to gather all the information and get everybody's information. The New Hampshire Liquor Commission requested that we stand by until they arrive on scene to do that. Your report states that Mr. Hodgson told you that night he didn't see what happened because he was behind the bar. Is that accurate? He said he was in, I believe it was, he was in the, he was in the, the bar. I don't know exactly if he was behind the bar or he said he was in the bar and he didn't see what happened, yes. I'll show you a copy of what has been marked uh, uh, Exhibit 1 for the state. Uh, may I approach Ryan? Thanks. It's not substantially similar to what he wrote in this, what was written in this, this statement, that he didn't see what the fight that happened. Could you ask me a question again? I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, in, in that statement that you see that was written for Mr. Hodgson, is, is that, does he also state that he didn't see the fight because he was behind the bar? The, the statement says he was washing dishes behind the bar, um, and when somebody else yelled fight, by the time I was able to get outside, I saw John Green with blood in his face. I gave him paper towels. I asked the bartender for a phone to call 911. John said he had already called 911, the video camera outside, and there's some crossed out wording here, I should say, and inside did not work, and then it says uh, Mr. George Hodgson on the bottom side. At the point in time, actually, can I, I'll take that back? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. There's a point in time that you um, asked Mr. Hodgson if he would be interested in hiring him to do detail work at his bar, is that correct? It goes to the uh, this. It, it goes to uh, the motive and the way this this uh, was carried out. Um, I, as I said, do you remember the exact date and time that you're referring to that? I'm asking if, if there was a time that you would ask Mr. Hodgson if you would be interested in hiring for to do detail work at the bar. There's been numerous times that we spoke to Mr. Hodgson. As a matter of fact, I worked the detail for Mr. Hodgson at his request. Um, it was a uh, it was a, a pig roast that he had with the uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs and stuff that, that came out of Hells Angels, et cetera. And uh, he was worried about safety, and the police chief in town was worried about safety. I, I don't know if that's what you're speaking of, sir, or not, but you, that you was... You stated the, uh, the night question, you stated to Mr. Hodgson you wanted to put him out of business, is that accurate? No, absolutely not, sir. You stated that uh, when Mr. Hodgson stated that he didn't see the fight because he couldn't make it out in time, you stated, quote, this is why cripples shouldn't own bars. Absolutely right? not, sir, but I saw that in the union later. How long did you uh, detain? Uh, all said and done, what time did you finally clear the scene? I don't know the exact time that we cleared the scene, so I'd have to refer to the dispatch logs to be able to get you an accurate time. Okay. Approximately, um, well, uh, approximately how long um, did you, from the time that you got to the scene to the time that you left, approximately how much time transpired? I would have no idea. So I'd have to, again, I wouldn't want to misstate a fact in terms of an exact time. It was several hours that we were there. Okay. Your Honor, I am almost finished. At this time, I would like to enter um, dispatch logs that I received from the um, from the state as Defense Exhibit One. I'm going to object until the Foundation Your Honor, and the witnesses get those. Uh, I certainly don't have anybody from dispatch. We don't enter those rooms. That's dispatch. Judge, Mr. State. Thank you. That's all I have. Sergeant Kelly, when you testified on cross-examination about 
drafting a complete report. Is everything that happened that night contained within your police report? Uh, yes, it is. Well, I mean uh, everything. It, is the fact that you were going cold in that police report? You just interrupted him right in the middle of his answer. Uh, yes, it, reports that, that we prepare are to reflect our uh, recollection when we testify. So certainly there's not every, every detail, um, you know, with respect to the beginning and the end. But again, it's, 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 uh, reports are written um, so that the officer, again, we do numerous things that happen, so that the officer has a chance to reflect upon a written report and that, uh, you know, a, uh, a third party could read that report and, and summarize an idea of the events. So when you say, when you draft a report, your training is obviously drafted accurately. Yes, that's accurate. And to draft a report, it, can a report ever be complete? No, I mean, they're, they're you know, so, so, sorry. That's okay. You indicated that you draft the report, I believe you just testified, so that you can refresh your recollection, usually specifically for trial, correct? That's accurate, okay. yes. So you draft the report so that you, Sergeant Kelly, can read that report and refresh your recollection, correct? That's accurate, yes. It may not help me, because I wasn't there that night, but it helps you. Yes, it does. And you might draft it differently than, for example, Officer Nader. That's accurate. Your wording might be a little bit different than this. Yes. Okay. In terms of the two reports, um, the second report is, uh, well, it's not two reports, is it, actually, Sergeant Kelly? It's not two reports. No, there's only, again, um, there's only one report in this case. The, the other report was a, was a work product that was, went to a supervisor for revisions and shouldn't have been sent out, was sent down there. So the, the two-page <coughs> report is merely an extension of the earlier report. Correct. Uh, my, my supervisor at the time uh, who I uh, finally made it to Lieutenant Carney, uh, quite frankly, uh, told me that I needed to put a great amount of detail in the report and that the report that I turned in was not uh, was not detailed enough to cover the events. And he wanted me to add more detail to it based upon the fact that there was criminal charges that were coming out of it. You did that? I did. I know you said you had a problem with your throat, but I can't hear you. Yes. He came out at the end, is that what you said? Yes. Meaning the defendant? Yes. 
Do you know Mr. Hodgson? Yes, I do. Okay. And he's present in the courtroom this morning? Yes. Can you, oh, I guess this is afternoon, I'm sorry. Can you point him out for the record? Just describe something he's wearing or? No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But not sure. For a date notice, the witness identified the defendant. Do you objection, attorney? No. Objection. Objection. Without objection. And when, uh, when you saw Mr. Hodgson, what did he say, the defendant? What did he tell you? I said, George, I'm out of here. And he said, okay, see you later. Got to go. Now, you said to him, George, I'm out of here? Yes. Why did you say that to him? Because I had gotten an altercation and everybody was telling me to leave. And Including leave. the defendant? <coughs> yes. So the defendant told you to leave? Yes. Okay. And that's when you said, George, I'm out of here? Yes. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Yes, Your Honor, you um, said Mr. You might correct me say Mr. Hodge didn't come out until the fight was over. Yes. So he didn't see the actual fight? No, he did not. All right, thank you. Did you actually see exactly when the defendant came out? I, Mr. Green had walked in the back door and I was walking towards the first door as you pull into the parking lot and as he was going in, George was coming out. They just missed each other. And that's when you had the conversation with the defendant? Yes. Okay. Let me um, cross your um, in this case, if you ask me, I'll take your time to answer these questions in case Attorney Albert needs to tell you to, to stop, okay? So just kind of give, give, him, give him time, give him a pause. Um, when you, so you, from what I understand what you just said, Mr. Hodgson did not come out of the bar until John Green was already entering the bar when the fight had completed. Yeah. So you were you were leaving the bar. You were leaving. You were going towards your car. Is that correct? Yes. And Mr. And Mr. Green was going into the bar at that time. So the fight had dispersed. Yes. And so it was only that it was only at the time that the fight had completely dispersed and you were walking in opposite directions with Mr. Green that Mr. Hodgson came out of the bar. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you for your testimony. You may step down. Any objection to this being excused? No, no. Attorney Hepler? Any objection? No objection. You may leave any time. Attorney Albert, the court thanks you for your service. Welcome, Your Honor. Are you next? Thank you.